Hello, you are tuned in to Eric Jose on Doctor Who on YouTube. Uh, here we will cover pretty much anything Doctor Who, spin-off shows from Doctor Who, Doctor Who itself, old Doctor Who, anything goes, anything at all, people. I will talk about all kinds of Doctor Who here with you. So if you have any comments, questions, anything that you just want to just talk about or, you know, ask me a question about because I do have an extensive history with Doctor Who. I've seen pretty much everything that's available. So, like I said, I encourage feedback and comments and questions so please do so and I just wanted to introduce you to my friend here Mini Handles who will be in my videos with me hello fellow Whovians we're here today talking about uh, episode of Doctor Who the uh, called oxygen uh, you'll remember it was on the space station with the suits the automated suits um, interesting episode I gotta say because well if you're like me and you watch The Walking Dead and you're into the zombie stuff, this this episode kind of jumps out at you. Um, but so I originally was like, oh, "Ooh, cool space zombies," you know. But uh, obviously, it wasn't quite zombies. But you know, whatever. But it was it was still fun. It was a fun episode. You know, basically starting out with the Doctor grabs Bill and he's trying to sneak away from Nardal, Nardal, and um, you know. Nardole still catches him. It's funny. I just think that's hilarious. And then they're in there in the they're in the TARDIS there, and he's telling the Doctor that he removed that particular piece, so there's nobody's going anywhere. And I love it. The Doctor's just like, "Who told you that?" And and Nardole's like, "You did." And he's all, "Oh, well, there you go." And he like <laughs> just hits the materialization circuit, and off they go. Um, hilarious, classic Doctor Who, to be honest. But uh, good, you know, it was a pretty good opening as far as openings go. Uh, but then we get to this, you know, this space station where the doctor got this distress call from. What did he call it? Something like, yeah, that's my theme music. And Bill, Bill is just like, oh, what? You know, you like distress calls? And the doctor has a really good line there. Really good line that he has there. And he says, he says, you never really, you never really see the true face of the universe until it's asking you for help. <laughs> so very, very uh, fun opening. Very good opening, in my opinion. So then we get to the space station and, you know, there's the whole the whole thing of that there's no air on the station. It's like, oh, that's bizarre. You know, that's kind of weird. Why is there no air? And then they, you find out that these suits, you know, everybody's wearing these suits and that the air is in the suits. So it's like, hmm, that's interesting. So this whole space station to cut cost was was only putting air in suits. Therefore, if there was a leak only a little bit of air leaked out of a suit and and yet imagine this imagine having to pay for air you know that's something you need constantly to live uh so imagine having to pay for it so i really personally would like to have seen the doctor at the end of the episode i would have liked to have seen the doctor take those two people right to corporate i'm also curious i'm also very curious if if it's the same corporation that was in charge of the um, the island where the the episode with Matt Smith, the almost people, that had the the pool of uh, milky stuff that you know they would create bodies out of. So then those bodies would go work with the acid instead of you know them actually putting their own lives in danger. You know, at the end of that episode, Matt Smith takes a few of them and drops them off at corporate. I would be highly, highly intrigued to find out if this is the same company. Um, so it's just a thought I had as I was watching it. But anyway, we move into now, well, you know, they're they're discovering these suits and, and you know, and, and Nardal's explaining to, to Bill that, you know, it, you know, because Bill's like, why didn't it just measure it out in minutes? What do you mean breaths? And, and then Nardal has to explain to her, well, it doesn't work that way with breaths. If you're, if you get excited or fearful, your breathing increases, your breathing speeds up. And so put the, a time limit wouldn't apply to something like that because when you're relaxed and and everything and focused you're going to be breathing much more slowly and using much less air so Nardal has to explain that to her so you know we get past that and and then you know we move on to the that thing suddenly wakes up the the guy in the suit that's that was in the room with them where they were you know just talking about this and the, the like the thing in this the suit just wakes up and starts walking towards them the doctor points his sonic screwdriver at it. It somehow attracted the sonic screwdriver, which I thought was odd. But then the sonic screwdriver shorted out the suit. 
Uh, so it was, that was interesting, but you know, so we end up having the doctor with this broken screwdriver. You get the oh, <laughs> so quite funny. And then we have Bill asking the doctor, "Do people ever hit you?" <laughs> to which he says, "Only when I'm talking." <laughs> That's great. You know what else this episode reminds me of? I don't know if everybody here saw, but back in Capaldi's first episode as the Doctor, the his basically his premiere episode, they did a uh, they did like a special. There was like a little fifteen minute preview or a little fifteen minute pre show um, before the episode of Doctor the that that season's first episode of Doctor Who, um, which you remember is the episode with the Tyrannosaurus in Victorian London, and so they had this little fifteen minute show called uh, Talking Who, right? And and after after Doctor Who, they had an hour-long show. Okay, it was hosted by Chris Hardwick. And you may know Chris Hardwick because he hosts Talking Dead, which is the, you know, the kind of show that comes on after uh, Walking Dead. And they just have usually some of the actors or actresses on the couch, and they talk about the show and some of the things that happened in it and stuff. And so they, they were kind of, I you know, I thought they were going to be basically trying to do the same thing with Doctor Who. And they brought Chris Hardwick over there and had him do this After Who special thing. And uh, if you remember in that episode, there's the part where the android ends up escaping at the end, um, running away from the Doctor and stuff. But the Doctor obviously manages to stay with him. But um, you remember there was a balloon that inflated and lifted like this one room out of that building. And uh, that's where this, that's where that, you know, whatever it was, Android guy, whatever robot was. And if you remember, I mean, and the balloon was made out of basically skin that they had collected, you know, because they were collecting people's part, you know, they were collecting people and parts from people and parts from animals, things that they could use to repair themselves. And whatever was left over was, you know, they they just basically had a bunch of skin left over from doing those sorts of things and they ended up making that big balloon now the funny thing is the reason why i'm talking about this is because i don't know if you remember but will wheaton was also one of the people on the couch for that out after who special and if you watch talking dead you'll know you'll know this that chris hardwick likes to call out hashtags he likes to call out hashtags to get people talking about you know talking dead on twitter while the show is going on and stuff so he did a similar thing when he was doing this who this doc this you know basically Doctor Who special that was around the episode, and he he basically at one point says hashtag skin balloon, let's see if we can get that trending. Well, I you know the sound of it doesn't sound all that you know pleasant or you know uh, wholesome, um, and immediately dude Will Wheaton was hilarious. I mean. He, he was totally hilarious because as soon as Chris Hardwick said that, Will Wheaton went more like hashtag how to kill a after who special. <laughs> and Will Wheaton was right because they had no more talking who after that. So I don't know if it was because of Hardwick's hashtag skin balloon comment or not, but, but all I know is that they didn't have another after who special. So I got to tend to think that, you know, Will Wheaton was right. So, anyways, that was just something that this episode reminded me of and thought it was funny, so I wanted to go ahead and talk about that. Something else that I th- saw in this episode that I thought was a little bit weird was was Nordahl. Nordahl was talking about the station sounded like an old girlfriend that he used to go out with or whatever, right? And, well, you already know if you've watched my other videos, I, I, I believe Nordahl is, is, a, is a robot or a, you know not not uh at least not organic or doesn't appear to be as i said in episode one we saw like a bolt fall out of him in uh one of the like episode three we heard him say i was reassembled for this blah 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 blah. so to be reassembled means he's mechanical so i'm not sure why he needed air on the station either but we need to find out more about nordal but he recognizes the voice of the station and he's like sitting there like every time she talks he's like oh yeah man she's still just like that like like he knows her like and like this station is talking and acting like this person that he knew apparently then he remembers the girl's name and he says oh yeah her name was Velma and at that moment the station goes yes that's right my name is now Velma 
Like, like it just, it Nordahl could just said that, and suddenly the station was like, I don't know, that was just strange to me. So I was like, hmm, I, there's more to Nordahl than meets the eye. I think for sure. I think that in the coming episodes, we're gonna see. We're going to see more about him, and probably by the end of the season, he's going to be a he's going to be a lot less meek, and he's going to be a lot more involved. And I think it's going to be interesting to see. So, all right. So we go on in the episode. Then we get the we get kind of the the part where the the doctor and Bill are talking, and he's making a a joke about you know something or whatever about dying or you know dang, being in danger and stuff like that or whatever and he's making a joke and she's like oh don't do that he's like don't do what and she's like make jokes to distract me from whatever's about to kill us <laughs> and he goes and then he says hilarious he says whatever whatever else are jokes for <laughs> so another classic line from doctor who but hilarious anyways so it moves we it moves on to the fact that then they're getting, they, you know, the doctor kind of, they're moving down a corridor and suddenly Bill's suit stops. And upon the suit stopping, the doctor also realizes what's going on. That, that the suits haven't really been hacked. That this is the way the suits are designed to act. And that whatever's controlling them, you know, basically is causing this to happen. And it's just business as usual. And upon realizing that, you know, he comes up with his plan. But he has to let Bill get, you know, basically overrun by the the other suits. The suits that have deactivated their organic components. So, you know, the doctor comes up with this brilliant plan where he basically wires up essentially a dead man switch. Um, essentially, he ties all their heart monitors or whatever together and, and, ties the, and, and basically has it set up that if their heartbeats stop, the station blows up, and the corporation loses far more money than they were trying to save. So, it's, you know, a fun episode. It was pretty brilliant. Um, you know, it's a little bit, I'm a little bit wondering about how, what's going to go, what's going to happen. The, I mean, I wish they showed us. You know, I wish they showed the doctor dropping them off, and, and we get to see what it what it was like at corporate. Because, seriously, corporate killed all of those people on that station. The only reason Bill didn't die is because her battery was too low. The battery of her suit was too low to actually kill her. It really just kind of put her in stasis. So, that's that's essentially where that's at. Because her suit was malfunctioning in the first place. He realized that at the time when he left her in the corridor. That's why he knew that she would be okay. But... All those other people are dead. The corporation killed them. So I'm a little bit... I mean, I can't help but wonder what would happen when those two people, when the doctor drops them off at corporate. What's going to happen to them at corporate? Is somehow corporate... Is it going to be somehow because it's on world somewhere that corporate isn't just going to do what corporate basically was about to do to them out on the space station? I mean, or, or or are their heart monitors still tied in? Now that would be funny. If basically, if their heart monitors are still tied into the station, and if their heart stops, then the station would blow up. Then that would probably protect them at corporate. But we don't know. Hopefully, maybe they'll revisit this, and we'll we'll re meet up with those characters later and find out what happened or something. Maybe I don't know. Maybe in the last episode of the season, for some reason, they'll have uh, a call to do to do that or a reason to do that. But. Can't help it. I can't help but be curious because I mean I was help. I was curious in the uh, the other episode, the almost people, when the doctor takes the the people from that island where they were mining the acid and takes them at the end of the episode to corporate so that they can explain to corporate what's going on and that those bodies, those things that they were creating to work with the acid, were actually self aware and all that stuff. So, anyways. We don't get to find out, so we may never get to find out. But I gotta tell you, I'm highly curious about it. Um, so anyways, that's about it for this one, folks. And, uh, we'll see you guys later. <laughs>